so my project here, we're looking at obviously beets in a bucket. They have a lot of different colored tarps, as you can see on them, and that's supposed to simulate different colored plastic mulches that are going to be out there. And what we're looking at is three different um, varieties within Beta Vulgaris beets. Um, so we have sugar beets growing out here. We have table beets, which are just going to be what you would eat as a person at the store. You'd go buy a regular red beet. So those are your table beets. And then we also have Swiss chard. For anybody that doesn't know, that's basically the top part of the beet that you would eat as a leafy green. Um, they're not very commonly sold in the store because they have a, a limited lifespan. They have a lifespan of, I think, like 10 to 14 days. They sell them at Safeway if you're interested and you don't want to grow them yourself. Um, so what we're looking at, we're looking at a couple of things out here. We're looking at um, shade avoidance and we're going to look at how different um, qualities of light affect growth and whether we're going to get an increase in our yields and things, things that go of that nature. So shade avoidance. Basically shade avoidance is plants can sense that there's other plants around them and this is done through the different um, lights within or the different spectrum of lights out there. Um, red light and blue light are the two types of light that plants use the most to photosynthesize and far red light is reflected from plants. So if you're, let's say, all these different weeds that are on the ground in front of us, they'll be able to sense that there's different lights around them or different plants around them because that far red light is reflected. Um, so the beets out there, um, the thought is, is that the different light that's reflected, um, there's, a, there's something called a far red to red ratio. So if you have more far red light that's reflected from the plants surrounding it, that's going to, in theory, cause your plant to grow stronger and taller to try to outcompete the plants around it. So it can essentially produce the most and survive and do the best out there. So we want to see what's going to happen with all of that, which will be really interesting to see what happens. We're going to harvest these here next week, and we'll have a bunch more data, and then we're going to do this project next year again. So we'll have two years of data, and then we'll really know what's going on with these. And then um, on top of that, like we talked about, it's not always quantity of light that plants use, it's the quality of light that plants use and the quality that they can get. So we're looking out here, generally red and blue light, like we said, is going to be what plants use the most of. So if we put red, red mulch around, red tarp, or blue mulch around, are we going to get an increase in yields? Are we going to get, for the Swiss chard, are we going to get better, better, more quality and more marketable leaves out there? And for the table beets, are we going to get a better beet that you can buy at the store as a producer? Or are we going to get a better beet that you can produce in your local garden where you have limited space? And that, that to me is also super important is how, excuse me, how is this going to be um, for a person that has limited space and limited good quality soil? How can you increase the production within that small area and make the most, you know, economic dollar or help yourself as an individual produce more? And so we are going to find out some more information here in the next week, which will be really fun to see and see if we have um, these results like we think we might have. And we know that in the past, um, green light is going to be the most detrimental to plants, if that makes sense. They aren't going to use green light the most of anything. And that's why when you look at a plant, you see green. You see that green light that's reflected it's because they aren't using that. It doesn't help in photosynthesizing. Um, and we know that from the person that did, they, we did a project last year, one of other Andrew's other students, she looked at just sugar beets. And in her results, she found that green light on produced up to, or decreased yields up to 12% when they're surrounded by green tarps. So we know that green obviously is not the color to use. It's not gonna give us an increased yield. And in her results, when she was looking at the sugar beets, the sugar beets are, were on average heavier and produce more when they were surrounded by red mulch. So that's why we continued this on to look at um, different varieties of beta vulgaris. So we want to know what's going to happen. And Swiss chard is kind of the strange one because we're not really sure what's going to happen. Is it going to produce a better leaf? We know that um, with the project last year, it produced bigger sugar, um, sugar beet roots, but we're not looking at the roots, obviously, in Swiss chard. We're looking at just solely the leaves. So is that going to produce more marketable leaves for maybe a producer or a small sale? small scale producer or a home gardener and so that's what we're going to find out next week and that'll be kind of that that to me is the uh the key one that's going to be really interesting to see what happens because that's a little bit different than the research that has been done in the past year so with that do we have any questions how do you control the water to make sure that you get the same amount of water you throw those buckets that's it I mean, that's the other interesting one is we have been watering as consistently as we can um next year we're going to look at doing going into doing a drip line irrigation. And the problem with these buckets is, as you can see, as any potted plant that you have at your house or you buy at Walmart, they consume the water really fast. And because generally they're in black pots, they go through that water really fast and it evaporates and all that stuff. 
So it's a struggle to keep enough water on them, but it's, we water them every day out here. Um, I tr we try to water them as consistently as possible, but that's why next year, um, on my second year with this project, we're definitely gonna try to do a drip line so we can really take out one more variable in that. That's the goal. Do you have any more questions? Correct. Um, we're gonna look at, so we're gonna look at sugar. So the question was, is um, what about nutritional content? Sorry guys. Um, so we're gonna look at, for sugar beets, they looked at last year, um, what was the sugar content in there? So we will do the same thing with the sugar beets. Um, we haven't gone on to look at, I guess, table beets and Swiss chard, if that will increase our nutritional, but that's certainly something that we could look into and it hasn't even graced my mind, but I'm very glad that you brought that up. So the question was, is did the sugar beets um, have more sugar content with the red? And they did not. They just, they had more vo um, volume to them, correct? Okay, this was, before, this was while I was still in the College of Business, so. <laughs> um, right across Prex's pasture. Other questions? When you say red and blue, I mean, LED are red and blue inside. Is that why you have the red and blue lights? So um, you're saying? In the greenhouse got red and blue LED lights. So is that why they're red and blue? Because of... To get better. Here? Yeah, so the question was, and I think I can answer this. Um, the question was, is, are some of the lights in the greenhouse, um, why are they red and blue? And is that, to, um, is that because the light quality, again, is going to be better? And I believe the answer to that is going to be yes in some of those. I, those, I'm guessing, are somebody else's experiment that you saw, but that, I'm assuming, is what it is, is because they're trying to get that better quality light. Because a green light versus a red light versus a blue light, they're going to give you, they should give you different, different results, is the thought. Other questions? Yes, so and, the, the... And also you have, I think, four colors out there. Why don't you have green that you said, or I didn't don't the, see it. There is green. You can't see it. you got to look up close. So the question was, is why do I refer to the plastic mulch, or the plastic tarp as plastic mulch? And I guess the reason I refer to it as plastic mulch is because that's what everybody else has been calling it, <laughs> and that's what it's called kind, somewhat industry-wide. Um, and then he also asked, why are there only um, four or five colors out there? So, and I guess I didn't cover that. So there are 270 buckets. There's 90, 90, um, 90 plants of each variety of Swiss chard, table beets, and sugar beets. Obviously, as you can see, the wind got like 40 or 50 of them already, shocking. Um, and then there's five different colors and then a control without a tarp. And one of those out there, there's black, blue, clear, red, and green. And green's out there if you go and look up close. You have to look at it in the light. It looks like black, but it's actually green. And it's strange when you see it, but it really is green, and it, it shows off green lights. So that should answer that question, I believe. Have you thought about doing this in the greenhouse itself? Um, so the other question was, are we going to do this inside the greenhouse? That is coming this fall when the temperatures get colder. We're going to do some different stuff with, and we're going to do some more shade avoidant stuff. So we're going to look at red light and uh, far red light and see what we get for answers. We were just talking about that earlier tonight. So we will definitely continue this in the greenhouse. And that, may certainly change up here in the next, or we may change and do some more stuff in the next semester as we figure out some more stuff and I learn some more stuff about this because I have a whole nother year and well two years now still. So any other questions? All right, thank you everybody for listening. Hope you enjoyed it.